So I've been asked to keynote a presentation for the Northwest Action Summit. We're going to be talking about seller financing and private money. So what I'm going to do here for you is give you a little bit of insight into that presentation. This is going to be a dry run of the presentation. A couple of things before we pull up the PowerPoint that I'd want you and the audience to understand. What we're going to talk about here are potentially game-changing things to adapt and understand in your business. Both seller financing and private money have allowed Olivia and I to achieve next level things. I will say, and you will see in the presentation, that a lot of people talk about both of these strategies being easy. Lots of them talk about no money down. Lots of people want to spin this web of ease, and I'm not going to do that. While both strategies, as you will see, we have used and used extensively, I do not want you to think it is easy. In fact, like my hat says, it requires work. Throughout this presentation, I drop several bonuses. I hope you like them. I hope you take advantage of them. Uh, again, everything we do here is to give value to the community. So if you have any interest in understanding the truth about seller financing or the truth about private money, buckle up because this is going to be probably a 45 minute or so presentation. So let me get into it and uh, we will get started. Just pulling up the slides real quick. We will put them into slide share mode and we will get rid of my picture in the corner. Alrighty folks, so this is the cover slide for the presentation. This will probably be up again. Uh, we are going to close out the session with Northwest Action Summit. I thank you for the opportunity. I really enjoy uh, talking and giving speeches, uh, keynotes, and things of that nature. So if you have other places that might want to get some love from one rental at a time, just reach out. Let's get started. So again, the goals for this talk and, the, and for you watching this on YouTube or for the audience is I do want you to understand it is possible. Seller financing is possible. Private money is possible. Number two, it is not easy as others make it look. There are lots of people that are trying to sell snake oil and that want you to believe that all you have to do is say the word seller financing or private money and you're rich. That's not how it works. Real estate investing is amazing. If you can skill up and learn seller financing and private money, you will very likely go to the next level. And then again, throughout this presentation, I am going to give you several bonuses. I'm going to highlight some tools. I am really going to help you understand how you can get better, how you can use these strategies to move forward. So the reality of seller financing and private money. It takes effort to confidently explain the benefits. Folks, a lot of you out there watching all this snake oil stuff will start saying seller financing and private money and get all giddy and excited. And let me just tell you, sellers and potential lenders can feel when you are more excited and you don't know what you're talking about. Money will run. It will hide. It will say no. It will ignore your phone calls and emails and like that. Don't. Don't rush it. Learn, learn the process, learn the benefits, practice, and you too can get better. It's going to take lots of attempts. First and foremost, seller financing. Most, most sellers can't say yes. Seller financing requires a decent amount of equity in order for the seller to say yes. It is going to take practice on you know buying borrowing private money it will take practice and conversations and things of that nature it will take follow up there are some folks that will say no the first time maybe no the third time but if you continually do the work and there is an opportunity maybe that person will say yes eventually it is going to take a lot of effort on your part you will see throughout this presentation, I give you plenty of opportunities to skill up and learn. Again, 
always trying to give value to the community. But please, you have to do the work. You have to build a reputation of being trustworthy. You, are, you will be checked out. Your sellers, your potential lenders will look around and try to figure out, do you know what you're talking about? This is why I suggest today you document your process of learning, you document your market, you document opportunities. I suggest you do it on YouTube. In the past, we had done this with a website called wealthbuildingpro.com. I don't think it exists anymore, but you can check it out. I think there might be an archive. I certainly don't pay for it. But today, we do it on YouTube. You have to document what your, your process of learning. Nobody just rolls out of bed with a gold star. You've got to do the work. A large network is helpful. You've got to continually grow your network. One of the seven goals of One Rental at a Time or ORAT rules is grow your network by two people a week. If you grow by two people a week, you will know 100 new people in a year. You will know 200 people in two years. And if you really want to go ham on this, why not try to meet four new people a week? Your network is your net worth. You must create and structure win-win transactions. You must think about the seller. You must think about the lender. You must understand what they want and what they need. When do they need the money? How fast do they need the money back? Are they okay with just a long-term hold? What, what is going on? You have to understand them before you can structure a win-win deal. A lot of you come in hot, pushing this, pushing that, pushing this, pushing that. You haven't has, asked any questions. You have to understand the seller or the potential lender. Again, never forget that most sellers can't say yes to seller financing. They just don't have the equity or they need all of that cash for the next purchase. All right, so let's do seller financing first. We will do private money second, okay? Because again, I want you to see each of them. So again, seller financing first, private money second. So first off, here are some deals that we've done seller financing. And I've given you the, the name or the street name and my estimate on what year we did this deal. We actually used seller financing on our third purchase way back in 2003. It was on a street called Ferris. The seller in this case had to come in as a second. Yes, folks, a lot of you think seller financing is a first. You can absolutely use them as a second and is one of our bonuses later in this presentation. You will see a 90% CLTV loan that is the best Swiss army knife I know of. And it relies on the seller taking back a second. So again, we did this way back in 2003. We wanted this property. It was two houses on one lot. Unfortunately, we didn't have the down payment. At the time, I was putting 20% down because I did not know any better. In this case, we were out of money. So what we had to do is we had to have a conversation with the seller and say, you know, sorry, we like the deal. But unfortunately for us to get this done, you have to take back a small second. In this case, it was 10% of the purchase price. I think, I don't know, 10 grand, 13 grand, something like that. But at this point, the seller had a lot of equity and was okay with it. We, the seller, I think at this point, got an 8% interest only. I think it was a five-year balloon, something of that nature. And the seller was happy. They closed the deal. We had a first. We sent a small check to the seller as a second position. And everyone was happy. We bought an 18-unit building. Uh, the seller wanted some of the money now and wanted to hold a little bit of the money later. In this example, the seller actually, through the listing, talked about potentially carrying back. Why would a seller want to do this? Well, first and foremost, sometimes the seller, all that cash is a problem, right? Not only will they have huge potential tax complications, but also a lot of cash in at one time could be a problem for the family. Maybe she felt like she was going to you know, have her kids or aunt, you know, whatever, cousins or whatever, come and try to get some of that money. So she wanted to maintain some income uh, over the course of the time. So again, in this case, we did an, about an 18 unit building uh, with the seller taking back a significant second mortgage. We did a 0% interest, 10% down purchase of a house in 2018. 
In this case, the house needed a fair amount of love. Uh, this was a uh, frustrated landlord that was done, didn't want to do the big heavy turn. Uh, they knew uh, someone in our network. Uh, our network came to us and said, hey, would you like this deal? This was actually a wholesaler. So the wholesaler, I think, made five or 10 grand on us. Uh, and then we got a great house that we still own today. Zero percent interest, 500 bucks, full principal payment, um, you know, uh, until the loan is paid off. So no balloon in this case. Uh, still own that house today. Uh, we bought a 14 unit portfolio. I think it was two fourplexes, a triplex, and three houses. I think that's what it was. I think that adds to 14. Um, we actually bought that portfolio for about $200,000 under market. Me, we, and the sellers knew it was under market, but the seller wanted one buyer. They wanted a known entity. Uh, he knew uh, I actually bought a property from him earlier, just a just a little house. Uh, but he liked what we did. And he said, I want to sell it all one time. The only thing that they wanted was no early payoff. So we had to structure a deal um, where we had a, I think a lockup period was five years. Uh, so again, I think it just passed, uh, but there was no early payoff. We couldn't sell different units, things of that nature. Um, but yeah, so again, sometimes you get creative and create win-win deals. In this case, the seller got his payments every month. We got 200K in equity the day we closed. And uh, let's just say that portfolio was up seven figures uh, since the day we purchased it way back in 2018. So really happy with this purchase. Uh, rents are way up, all of that. So again, uh, seller, uh, seller financing, absolutely possible. Uh, we bought a distressed apartment building, 90% seller financing. This is uh, an 18 unit building in 2013. This is an interesting story because the seller sold it on seller financing before us. If you look at the story of this particular property, it was sold at 1.44 million, I think in 2007. If you guys don't remember 2007, that's when the world started to end and uh, property values crashed. The particular buyer on this seller financing wasn't paying the mortgage. This particular seller tried and tried and tried to work with that first person to foreclose. Unfortunately, at that point, the building is in horrible condition. This seller tried to sell it on market, uh, but unfortunately, in the condition it was and in the lending environment it was, they could not find a buyer who could get a loan. So at that point, after a year or a year and a half of trying to sell it and a lot of follow-up, we finally had the seller understand that we were a good option. We would take care of the property and uh, did another seller note. Again, the seller did not want to do this in the beginning, but sometimes seller financing is the only option. Uh, and ultimately we bought this property for 700 grand. Uh, again, the first buyer had it at 1.4 and lost it. We picked it up for more than a 50% discount uh, and uh, still have that property today. We bought a 10 unit building directly from the bank. We got this essentially 100% financed. Again, folks, this was done in 2014. Uh, the bank saw what we were doing to the property next door. They wanted their property taken care of as well. They tracked us down, called us on the phone. I thought it was a joke, but yes, the bank president met us the next day or the next weekend. And we picked up that building as well. 100% financed by the bank. All we had to do was open an account with them and deposit 50K for repairs. That is okay. We would have spent that money anyway, uh, but that gave the bank the assurances that the repairs would get done and we wouldn't just sit on an ugly duckling. So um, lots of stuff going on. And then finally, picked up a fourplex uh, below market or at market price, but below market interest rate. Again, we gave... Um, the sellers their price, but they gave us our terms. Uh, again, this is something we picked up in 2018 and still own today. So again, seller financing deals are absolutely possible. Here's This is just a short list of the ones that we've done. Um, again, lots of lessons here. You can use it as a first or a second. You have to follow up. You have to understand what sellers want. They want to get paid back. They want secure position, all of those things. So my thoughts on seller financing. I think it is the most powerful tool to grow your wealth. If you want to really turbocharge your opportunities, understanding seller financing is critical. 
You could put it on houses, on fourplexes, on small apartments. Shoot, you could do them on big apartments. I think the largest or the best way to do this are on the small mom and pops. You're typically not going to get a four or 500 unit building seller financing because that's probably owned inside a REIT or something. But you can get a 10, an 18, a 40, maybe even a 100. But again, you don't know if you don't try. Again, seller financing is that powerful. It is not easy. It is not a get rich quick. And it's not a no money down strategy as people teach it. It makes me uncomfortable, uneasy, and frankly mad when I hear people try to make it look like, oh, you just, you just ask all the sellers for seller financing and you are good to go. That's not how it works. Uh, this is just a guess. It's my suspicion that probably only about five, maybe 10% of sellers can even entertain or say yes. Think about that. Of all the active listings, of all the off markets, lots of people have mortgages, lots of people need the cash, uh, but maybe it's one in 20, maybe it's one in 10. You've got to, you got to, you got to take some swings uh, to move forward. Most sellers and most agents do not understand it. If you are working through a listing agent, you are having, you're going to have a two-step process. You're going to have to educate that listing agent and, um, you know, sellers are generally uncomfortable. Remember back to our story, we had to do a lot of education uh, with the sellers. We had to show them our track record and really make them be comfortable for them to even consider it. Some folks, agents and owners, actually think seller financing is illegal. How many of you have had somebody tell you that seller financing is illegal? At least in California, I don't know the rules across the state. Seller financing is actually on the, the purchase agreement. It is actually an option. It is not legal. Folks, if you're a California agent and you think seller financing is illegal, go look at your car form because it's right there on page one. It is not illegal. It can be amazing, but you must create win-win outcomes. Folks, this is paramount. This is important. Uh, you must understand and create win-win outcomes. You've got to think about the seller first and you second, in my opinion. All right, so can you explain the benefits? Do you know what an installment loan is and why an installment loan is good? An installment loan is essentially the uh, seller financing loan to you. It is treated differently than a cash sale. It allows you to move capital gains um, into the future as uh, the loan is paid off. It also helps with depreciation recapture and things of that nature. Depreciation recapture, what the heck is that? You're going to have to understand it. You're going to have to understand it. And again, folks, there's a, some bonus material coming right up. Please pay attention. This bonus material is going to help you with these accounting things. Uh, depreciation recapture is one of them. What is it? Again, you own a building, you depreciate it to zero, you sell it, you have to pay that back. Again, you need to understand that and a bonus is coming. Capital gain savings, right? Do you want to pay all your taxes today or do you want to delay, delay, delay? You want mailbox money. Today as a landlord, you are. it is not passive. It is certainly not mailbox money. But hey, wouldn't you like a couple of grand showing up in your mailbox? Think about being a bank. Banks doesn't, don't have any stress. That could be you. You have to understand how the property is secured, right? Make them comfortable. Make them know it's legal. Go through title. Get notaries. Have it recorded. Just do all the right things to make that seller be comfortable. You can talk about why you can actually pay more. Yes, folks, at the end of this, I'm going to give you bonus. Again, there is a 90% CLTV loan product that allows you to pay more and get a lower interest rate on the debt if you know how to use it appropriately. But you can talk about why you can pay more. Uh, you can obviously tell the frustrated landlord that they are no longer having tenant headaches. That will be your responsibility. Again, banks don't get called for water leaks. The owners do. Again, make sure the owner understands that they are transitioning out of active management into passive in mailbox money, aka you are the lender or the bank. A very different, um, you know, working with that asset. And then obviously you should always talk about foreclosure. You should talk about, hey, if I don't pay, you have a recorded deed, you have a trust, just like a bank. If I don't pay, foreclose and you will get the asset back. That is your secured position.
All right, seller financing facts. It is sold as get rich quick. It is powerful. It is amazing, but it takes work. It's sold as no money down. You can absolutely do no money down deals, and I have. But again, it's not always that way. It's sold as easy. Again, I think it takes work. You have to understand balloon payments. I think a lot of the early deals I did have five-year balloons. I would never do that again. I want 10. You got to understand the tax benefits to the seller. Uh, you have to understand that agents uh, don't understand or think it's illegal. It's funny. It won't work on most properties. Again, most sellers can't say yes. Not often on the MLS. There are a few deals that you will see that say seller financing available. But again, these are uh, can be off market as well. You can do first or second mortgages. And here's your first bonus, folks. Uh, if you need to understand the accounting behind seller financing, I have done a couple of videos. There's lots of them, but these are two. These are deep dives. These are over an hour long. The first one is called uh, how, to get, um, how to Get with Seller Financing Deals. That's a horrible title. But basically, you can see it there, how to secure more seller financing deals. Um, again, that's the thumbnail, so you know what you're looking at. And then the second one is, again, uh, this is Bob Langworthy. He is a C, uh, CPA and EA. Uh, he reviews seller financing, he goes through a spreadsheet, talks about depreciation, recapture, seller financing, taxes, all of those things. So again, just go to my YouTube channel. These are 100% free. These are deep dives. You will likely have to watch these a couple of times. Uh, but again, if you want to really know seller financing, I highly recommend you watch these videos. All right. So we're going to switch gears to private money. Private money can really be the rocket fuel for your business. Uh, we have used private money a couple of different times, as you will see in a minute. But with without private money, we would quite simply not not be where we are today. In fact, I may not be retired. I may still be working uh, if we didn't have access to private money. So again, it is rocket fuel. You must document your experience and knowledge, folks. If you're going to get private money, the people are going to research you and really understand if you know your business. Again, by documenting first with Wealth Building Pro, later with YouTube, it really unlocks private money. You need to create a model that works for you and the lender. Just like seller financing folks, I strongly suggest you lean in and understand what the lender wants. Do they want short-term money? Do they want years? Do they want uh, interest rate? Do they want part of the deal? What do they want? Um, and of course, private lenders can never lose money. If you get into a deal and a flip and, the, and you end up losing money, the private lender can never, can never, can never lose money. They can never lose interest rates. It will blow up your re reputation. You must make sure all private lenders are paid back whole and on time every time. Your reputation matters more than your profit. Again, your reputation matters more than your profit. All right, so we've done two different deal structures. Again, these are just used as examples, you know, Figure out what works for you, your market, your lenders. 2009 to 2012, we paid, excuse me, 10 to 12% interest only. We had 10-year notes. We were buying distressed assets. We would fix them up and refi with private money to extract capital once rented. So we would get all of our money back so we could keep moving forward. Folks, we were doing Burr before those folks at Bigger Pockets called it that. Uh, we repeated this cycle every month for years. We actually recycled the same $50,000 over and over and over and over again. Uh, and again, we were happy to pay 10 or 12% having all our money out so that we can keep buying. Then in 2018 to 2020, we were both uh, retired. I was bored. Uh, we decided to start flipping slumlord properties into pride of ownership rentals. I did not want to pay 10 or 12% interest, but I was okay paying 6% interest and, and giving 20% of the equity, right? The gain on the sale. So in this case, our private lenders funded 100% of the purchase. We funded the repairs. 
They got 6% interest only and 20% of the profit. This is something I call the 6 and 20 program. Again, we documented this on our YouTube channel a couple of times with friends and family, and then private money rained down on us. We had millions and millions and millions of dollars at our disposal, and we ended up doing 56, 56 flips uh, in two years with the 6 and 20 program. Again, we bought things all the way up to a six-unit apartment building, single-family homes. Anything we could do to add value, we got 100% financing, and all we had to do was pay the repairs. Do you have proof that you know what you're doing? Again, sell it. private money is all about have you documented what you're doing. You can't go to a seminar and talk private money and then people just give it to you. Private money is going to look around and figure out, do you know what you're doing? You have to document it. I would document the process of learning and your buy box and all of those things we talk about on the channel. But they have to be able to figure out and research you. How do you reduce risk? How do you protect the lender? Is in the beginning, uh, are you putting more down? Do you have reserves? How does that lender reduce risk? Does rate and term match the deal structure? Does your lender need the money in six months? Do you Are you doing a year-long flip? Does the lender think this is a 10-year arrangement and you're doing a one-year slow flip, right? Does the timing match? You've got to over-communicate with your sellers because, or your lenders in this case because you don't want them to be surprised. How fast do you need the money back? That's something you will always want to ask. And you don't want to get in a situation where you take somebody's last dollar, they need it in an emergency, and then you're stuck. That is not okay. Explain what happens if you don't pay. Explain the foreclosure process. Be upfront. Make sure they understand they have a secured position, either first or second, depending on what you are doing. I want my lenders, frankly, to see upside in me not paying. Something I was very happy about, whether it was um, paying 10% or 12% interest upfront on the first time or the 6 and 20 program is... I believe with every fiber of my body, the the lenders in my case wanted me not to pay. Why? Because there was huge equity. I bought these things at ridiculous prices. I did all these repairs and they were worth 100% more or 80 to 100% more than their loan. They wanted me not to pay. They wanted that equity for themselves. That's what I want my lenders to think. I want my th lenders to think, Gosh, I hope Michael doesn't pay. That's how good the deal should be. All right, some private money facts. Private lenders lend because of you, not the property. I can't tell you how many people think it's about the property. It's about, no, they're they're investing in you. Yeah, the property might be important, but don't get it twisted. They are investing in you, not the property. You've got to document the process. I suggest doing that for three to six months. If you do that, as I have documented a couple of times, once on wealthbuildingpro.com, second on YouTube, if you can really show folks what you are doing, you can show multiple projects, money will rain down on your head. 100% of purchase is absolutely possible. And we've proved this dozens and dozens and dozens of times. But again, the reputation and the deal matters. Balloon payments. You have to understand balloon payments. Is it one year? Is it five years? Is it you know 10 years? Is it 30 year fully am. You have to understand it's not only interest rates, uh, but it also could be terms or length of term. I think you have to over communicate with your private lenders. They should never guess. In fact, my private lenders often get a text from me uh, when I have paid them or sent their Zelle or check or however we have agreed to pay. I send them a note each month just so, by the way, thank you very much. Here it is. Again, over communicate. And again, folks, I'm all about giving value. Here's another bonus. This is a big bonus for you folks. I did a 10-week uh, boot camp. Uh, and on day four, we did a boot camp uh, with Jason Pritchard. We talked about how he has raised millions and millions of dollars with seller financing. And I have given that away. So if you guys want to just get day four, you can find that on my YouTube channel. Look up day four boot camp. Again, Jason Pritchard is on my Mount Rushmore of investors and private money is a key uh, to his success. So again, folks, go check that out. Watch it, rewatch it. 
and understand what he is talking about. All right, so some final thoughts. Seller financing and private money can turbocharge your business. You need to understand the ins and outs. Folks, it takes work. It doesn't take just going to a seminar. It takes work. It takes learning. It takes practice. You need to document the process of learning. Yes, day one, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. Day 10, you're a little bit better. Day 100, you're even better. Document it. People are going to watch you evolve. Practice, practice, practice. I would actually get an accountability partner and really watch these videos, these bonuses that I've given you here, and then get on a Zoom call, have, have coffee, practice on each other. Talk about the benefits. Do you know what an installment loan is? Depreciation recapture, term, foreclosure, note, deed of trust. All of this vocabulary, you've got to get comfortable saying these things. It's not easy, but it's very possible. You don't stop looking. All righty, folks, we've done a lot here. We've given a lot of bonuses away, but I've got two more bonuses for you uh, because I just want to keep giving value. First, I talked about this at the opening, the 50-40-10 seller financing is gold. You need to understand what a 90% CLTV is. So first, folks, if you want to get any information on this, uh, this is the man. I talk to him every Thursday on my channel, S. Dow at Velocity Mortgage. Folks, the 90% CLTV stands for Combined Loan to Value is a very, 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 very unique product. You can use this on houses, on apartments, um, whatever it is. Uh, we will talk about that more in a minute. 90% CLTV, again, Combined Loan to Value. The 50 is the first, the 40 is the second, and 10 is your equity. So folks, you can get a very highly leveraged loan. You potentially pay more, uh, but if you structure the interest rates correctly, um, you can actually have a lower payment. Yes, folks, uh, we will get into that in a moment. Again, these can be very, very much win-win situations. Again, in an environment, especially in multifamily, where uh, sellers want a certain price, but the building doesn't appraise or it's yesterday's price. If they have the equity, you can structure a deal where you give them their price, but you get your terms. How can that work? Well, that 40%, what if they took back 40% at 1%, 2% interest? It happens all the time. Again, a 50% in this case, call it 9, 10% a second at one or 2%. So you borrowed 90% of the money at a blended interest rate of 6%. Think about this, folks. 6% money, highly leveraged. This loan is powerful. And we've done a lot of talk about this. We've done a deep dive on this. Again, folks, if you go to my channel, there's a video called Seller Financing Deep Dive, how to get below market interest rate, only 10% down. Build wealth. Again, this is an over an hour conversation with Stephen Dow documenting all of the win win processes. So, again, um, please watch this, rewatch this, understand the math, have the conversations. Okay, so now, how do you find owners that can say yes? Earlier in this presentation, folks, we talked about maybe five or 10% of the folks that can say yes. Is there a tool? Is there a way to help you find folks? Yes, I think there is. I think PropStream is the number one tool that my successful real estate and fr friends use. Jason Pritchard, Adrian, um, Omar, all of these folks who run businesses, they are using PropStream to find out about owners. And in this case, you're going to use PropStream to figure out which owners have high equity. High equity is the key to saying yes to seller financing. Good news is, folks, because my channel is so large, PropStream has given you a discount. It also allows you to have a trial where I think you can get 50 free leads for free. If you just go to this link, HTTPS colon, you can read it there, PropStream.com uh, slash ORAT, uh, you can get a discount and really, really up your game to help find these motivated or these sellers who can say yes. Again, I think you get two free weeks, 50 uh, record downloads for free. Uh, again, uh, go ahead and check that out. This allows you to hunt for sellers that can say yes. Uh, again, there's a deep dive video here uh, with PropStream. Again, giving away for free. 
Uh, again, why do great real estate investors use this tool? Again, this is over an hour long. He actually goes through the system, shows you how to use it, shows you how to do searches. Very educational, likely going to need to watch this a couple of different times. But yes, you do have the ability and uh, to find a tool to help you find uh, sellers who can say yes. All righty, folks, that's it. That's the presentation. Uh, do me a favor, like, subscribe, follow. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube, One Rental at a Time. Obviously, get my books on Amazon. And just a quick note, you can actually get my books on Audible, and you can have Dion be the narrator. Folks, if you are watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description. You can go to Audible and get a free book. Wouldn't you like to get a free book, One Rental at a Time, 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires, and have Dion just read the book to you. I do think there are some requirements like you have to be a new member or something like that. But hey, check it out. Audible link below, Amazon link below. Have an amazing day. Take care. So what do you think? That was a dry run, a little bit rushed, no audience participation. Hopefully you enjoyed those bonuses. Those videos are hours long. Uh, many of those videos were actually paid. Um, People paid to get them the first time, but given that this is a keynote presentation, I wanted to over deliver. So you can find those all on my YouTube channel. Uh, PropStream, amazing tool. All the great real estate folks that I know in my network use it to find sellers that can say yes. Um, private money is all about documenting your success. Again, Jason Pritchard, day four of the boot camp, pretty amazing. So, folks, seller financing, private money are amazing. We wouldn't be where we are today without it, but it takes work. It takes practice. It takes consistency. Do the work and you too can win.